So here is the forced day swivel and in these grooves here it's supposed to be a bunch of ball bearings and you but anyways you can see all a lot of the balls are sitting in there. So we're gonna get new ball bearings, clean this up and uh, but one of the things that, that's needed there's a stopper that goes right here to keep the ball bearings in the track but not go back through the hole this goes over just like this so inside these tracks you have your ball bearings and that's what keeps this from going up like this all the ball bearings would be in there in here you need a, a stopper well according to my friends over at Amal they don't sell the stoppers in, anymore they just say oh we don't make it sorry but they don't tell you how big it is, what it, what it's made of. In order to have days like this, you're going to have days like this. This is Tips on Tuesday. We're going to talk about what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. Stay tuned so you don't feel like doing this. If you like these videos, please subscribe and give us a like. And if you have anything to add to the conversation or any questions, please leave them below. I had some major problems with the force day swivel over the last month or two. And now I've finally got it fixed. So you can see that it's working. But I thought I was going to have to take my whole rig down, at least the force day down, to actually fix it. I didn't. And let me show you how I did it. I got some modeling clay. I'm going to put it in the hole there. And then what I'm going to do is make a mold of that hole and find out what the dimensions, all the dimensions. The hole is 10, but I'm not sure if it gets bigger or not one way or the other because I think it gets bigger um, on the other side so you push it in and then it just stays there but anyways let's uh, put some modeling clay in there and uh, get a mold just need to push it out oh there it is I'm just gonna make sure that I don't lose it I think this was the part that was holding the balls in and it looks like it's made out of Teflon piece Well, since I didn't know the exact dimensions of the ball stoppers, and plus, they wouldn't sell me the insert, which was completely ready to go, and I didn't know what the insert looked like because it was completely destroyed and lost at sea. So, I just ordered a whole new swivel. Here's the swivel for the force day. And uh, one of the things you got to watch out for when you get them from Mel is they don't put enough goo on the screws. So when you get yours, take these screws out and maybe even change the screws. I don't like the flatheads. I change them to one of these. But uh, anyways, pop all this stuff out. And make sure that uh, you have this up because all your balls are going to start coming out like mine just started coming out so let's uh, so these this is one of the stoppers right here and Amel doesn't make these stoppers anymore these things right here so we have to make our own so it looks like this is a little bit too big so we're gonna have to sand it down a little bit 
they're not included in the kit to rebuild. What are they? 9.5 by 4.5 and they're tapered just a little bit around the edges so you're going to have to make those and the hole inside I'm not sure if I can measure that yeah about four mils hole in the middle so it looks like it's made out of Teflon the first thing we'll do is we'll just clean up the tracks I've built up a ramp for the balls so the balls will just roll right into the hole and then I can push them in and push them aside. So take a look. So hopefully the balls are just going to roll down and then the hole will be right here and we'll just roll them right in the hole. So I've got my ramp built up in there. This is the first ball. See if we can get it inside there. So we drop the ball in. It's five balls. So it has gotten a little bit easier to get them in since uh, there was a bit of a learning curve. And I'm using my screwdriver instead, small screwdriver. Now I know that the, the bottom ones are going to be much more difficult to get in. So that's going to be a whole new learning curve. But uh, we're getting them in. I don't know how many I've got in now, but I've got a bag. That once I get to the bottom of the bag, I've got 25 in. Well, that's 25 balls on the top. So now what I did was I put a piece of tape over the hole so the balls can't get out. And now I'm gonna start to try to uh, figure out a way to get the balls in the bottom. And that's gonna be a lot more difficult. So we got an old good ball. What we're gonna try to do is we're gonna try to get it in the bottom hole. This one is gonna be much more difficult. This one's going to take skill, precision, but the hole is right here. We got it lined up with this track. We got a piece of wax at the bottom of the track so that uh, this, I don't know if you can see that, but the wax will guide the ball right, hopefully, into where the hole is. And then we'll just have to uh, try to get it in. I knew it was going to be hard, but I didn't think it was going to be this hard. Well, now it's time for a little MacGyver action. We need to make a tool that's going to help me get these balls up in. And I need to, uh, let's get rid of all of this stuff because this is just going to get in the way now. Well, this is going to be my first attempt at getting the ball inside. But we have to be careful not to lose our ball. Well, at least I didn't lose the ball. I might lose one of these, but it's gonna, it's two dollars a ball. That's not going to work. If I can't even get it into the hole, then it's not going to work.
I think I got one in. We'll see if that was a fluke. See if I can get a second ball in. Wow. That's two. Well, we set up a little net for our balls, just in case we drop a few. After breaking the tool I made, I made this tool. Now this tool is actually really cool. Watch this. It's made of a straw with a bunch of tape on it. And then there's a bunch of plastic to guide the ball. And then uh, it has a zip tie that you push to make the ball pop out. on the back because you're just leaning over this thing the whole time I'll get another one. Oh my okay here we go get another one. Something's wrong. Oh, you got it. It popped in. Bring it up. <laughs> yes, baby. I tried to get one more ball in there, but it wouldn't go in. So I think she's full. So what we're going to do is we're going to start the next project. Next project is to get the piece that goes in there all put on. So this is the new swivel that I bought, but uh, you can see the inside, I mean, I tape this in so the balls don't fall out, but uh, there's a, there's a cut in it. So you see that cut right there? So we're going to make that cut right now. Oh, there it is right there, right in front of me. This is the new insert, whatever you want to call it. And this insert is is already done up you can see that all the holes are drilled properly and it's got this cut so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a cut right down the side and then the other side I'm going to cut and fiberglass it up in place at least that's the goal Step one, process two, complete. So the goal is gonna be to uh, take out a chunk out of here and then a couple places where we can actually fiberglass some straps. So we're just going to cut into here, cut some side paths and then uh, fiberglass it all together in place. Now we'll just fiberglass this back together and uh, we should be good to go. So we're going to push this one out. I 
and so we need to get these holes drilled in this this part here Start of the finished product. So we also marked what's up and what's down. Well, what's down and what's up. So it's gonna sit like this. So now we're set up for the fiberglassing job. So under this is plastic. That's plastic right there. And then I got blue tape on all the areas I don't wanna touch. And then blue tape keeping the plastic on. Just gonna make sure that we block the sun. Gotta get some sandpaper to start the last steps. Well, there's my fiberglass job. Ouch. We need to keep the balls away from the track, which is right over here. So we keep the balls over here, away from the track. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that tape off and then we're gonna try to get the, the cap on it. Everything seems like it's working. Now we gotta get this all the way through to the other side. through to the other side. So you can see that ball again. All right, so now the other ball, the balls at the bottom can't come out, but the balls at the top can. So what we gotta do, get the cap in the top in. So that's gonna be kind of difficult, but I think we can do it right here with a screwdriver. And once we get that cap in, we only have one more cap to go, and we're done. And then the last thing I had to put in was the little stopper thing. And what I did was I put it in with this device here. I had the 
the stopper thing stuck onto here, put it up and in, and then nothing but nut. We need to put a bunch of anti-corrosion tough gel. But the more the merrier on this stuff. Thank you. I did notice a little bit of corrosion on this part here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of this off and then I'm gonna put a bunch of gel around it as well, just to make sure that we don't get any more corrosion. Yeah, it's not doing anything right now. Okay. All right, do it. Click it. Click it the other way. Go ahead and hold it. Okay, that's good. I love it when things work out. Isn't that beautiful? Is that beautiful or what? It is very beautiful we'll pull up our ballooner right here. And the reason why you want to pull it up right here is because it's more lined up with the halyard that's going to be pulling it up. Because when it pulls up and in, you want that fairly lined up. And this right here is the halyard that takes up our ballooner is a downwind sail. So it's four going almost dead downwind, dead down or just a little bit off. If you get wind that's 40 degrees off, dead down, it's pretty hard to hold it. And uh, I'll put the right here what the actual degrees that we fly it. But um, the halyard has a line that hooks it together. So that's the first thing. So right now I'm pulling the halyard up or I can pull it down by loosening up a little bit. So I've got one wrap on the winch so I can pull it up, take it down. Or if I, if I keep tension on it, it's not coming down. Okay, that's one step. I also have a thin loop on it. This is just a piece of Dyneema which I tied onto it so that I have a, a loop like this. And I'll show you what that does. In here, I've got my ballooner. Now, if you're flying your ballooner, you already got all of these out, out of here because it's already rigged for your poles. So all of these ropes are to rig poles that pull out, both your starboard and your port poles. And there's the, the top, and this is the clue. Before I would put the ballooner up, I would already have the poles out, and this sheet through the pole and back to the winch on the starboard side. I would have the Genoa already out on the port side and and then we would get started on pulling up this particular sail here which is our ballooner. If you notice at the top of this sail there's this device here. Now this is like a mouse like I think they call it a mouse they might call it something different than that but basically what happens is you put this into here 
and it goes up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go raise this up a little bit so that I can demonstrate something for you. So the force stay foil on ours has three tracks. One on the back for the Genoa, and then I've got a track here. This track here is for the ballooner, and you'll see why. And this track here is for the mouse that goes up and releases the ballooner. The Genoa is already out on port, and the poles on both sides are already out. Now, we're going to start to put up our ballooner. You make sure that your, your clue is already has a sheet all the way back to the back, but it's gonna be loose because once the ballooner is all the way up, you want it to just fly out in front of you. And then, you'll start to pull it in. But first, you gotta get it up. We take the ballooner make sure it's make sure it's put away right if it's put away right it's going to come out right put it through put the mouse in and you bring it up make sure that it's going into the track right here so you can see it's going into the track. And now what you do is you get your halyard. Make sure your halyard is looped properly. You're gonna bring up your halyard and you're gonna put your halyard into that loop. Now that loop is kind of, kind of, kind of small. That's why I have a Dyneema wrap on it, which will pull it in there. And then you can pull your sail up. Pull it up just a little ways. So it goes up. When it gets up to the top, you can see your halyard is pulling it. And now, watch. It clicks it in. And at that point, once it's clicked in, now, you can bring down your halyard by pulling on the other end of it. So what you do is you just yank that out. Because there's not two halyards up, your halyard is hooked to your four stay swivel. So now this, we can spin these together. So now you can actually furl both sails together. So your Genoa is over here, your ballooners over here, you can furl them together. When you want to get it down, both sails have to be all the way out. This is called your mouse. And now you take it, you tie it onto your halyard, and you put this into this slot. And then what you do is you take this all the way up. So let's do that. So you pull this all the way up and then you can see what will happen. The mouse comes up and it releases your other sail. The ballooner comes all the way down and then you have to make sure that you pull your mouse down and take it off. When you have this locked in here, if you have your halyard still on this, and you try to furl, what's gonna happen? You're gonna break this. There's been some people, because these break every so often, there's been some people that have made these out of aluminum. They think it's a great idea. They make it out of aluminum, they put their sail up. If you forget to take your halyard out, and this is made out of aluminum, you're gonna break a lot of shit. So, me personally, I would not do it um, because Let's say you don't forget, but somebody else forgets. You try to furl it, you're gonna break shit. So just don't do it. Same for your release mouse. You have to make sure that 
after your release mouse goes up and releases him, do not start to furl anything. Don't, I mean, you have to make sure because we've done it and I know about it and I've done it. Do not furl your sail until you get this mouse all the way down and you get everything off. So this has to come down and come out. So once everything's off, including this, this has to be, you know, off. Of course, it won't be on there at this point. And once everything, the Genoa is the only thing out, then you can start to furl. You can see I've got a couple balls left in there. I've got four balls left in there. We're gonna have to get those balls out. If you like this video, give us a like down below and click here to subscribe. That really helps us. And if you wanna watch more of us, click one of those. They said they came from Spanish. Oh.